Well, the time has come. If I don't cut back my hydrangea so I can dry my hydrangea heads, I'll have missed that small window of opportunity between my hydrangeas being mature enough to cut for drying and for them naturally decaying in the garden. And if like me, you're a novice flower arranger, but you love arranging flowers and cutting flowers to enjoy at home, why not consider subscribing to my channel? All you need to do is hit the big red button that says subscribed. And that means that next time you open the YouTube app on your phone, your laptop, or your, your phone, your laptop, or your tablet, my next video will be waiting for you. So my concern about cutting my hydrangea heads to enjoy as a dried flower during the lean winter months is that somehow by cutting the heads, I'll be interfering in the natural pruning cycle of the hydrangea. So my hydrangea is hydrangea paniculata. I had thought I'd save the label, the plant label from the pot. And when I was flicking through the pages of my Sarah Raven gardening journal, every other plant label was there, but not that one. So what I have done is I've gone online and looked. My husband has lent me his, he's got an RHS book on pruning. I've looked up in my um, gardening encyclopedias, my husband's gardening encyclopedias. And my understanding is that if you're going to prune your, and this is specifically to paniculata, the mop head hydrangeas I think might be a bit different. So do check your own advice before you um, take my advice as gospel. It really isn't. I am definitely a novice gardener. But it says that I should be pruning these in the springtime and you have to take it back to the buds. My, I'm, I'm, so I'm thinking that the paniculata has a flower head on each of the end of the long stems so I should be able to cut off what I need now for drying purposes and then go back in in the springtime to do the proper prune. So I am taking this as a, a light cut now and then a prune for garden blooming longevity in the springtime. So here goes. So what I am going to do is I want, you know, a tiny bit of colour left in the garden. I'm not going to take everything. And in particular, I'm not going to be taking this, this or this because I can see from their colour that they haven't yet matured. So hopefully that will just give me a little bit more interest with the plant through the winter months. And I may let those just die naturally on the flower stem. I'm slightly nervous at this point because being a novice gardener, I don't quite know what I'm doing. And being a florist and a flower ranger, my natural inclination is to cut with a really long stem. But I'm just conscious of the fact that if I cut long, I'm going to be interfering with the flowering capacity for next year. So I'm going to cut short because I don't really know what I'm doing. And here goes. And then once I have dried the stems, I will be able to add length to them using my floristry wires and even a kebab stick. So I will show you that at the end of the video. So do watch on. So, oh gosh, <laughs> I sort of feel a modicum of success here because this plant survived from, I think it was um, green when I bought it and it's gone through to this pinky stage. But I'm just now kind of conscious that I'm totally ruining it but it is exactly the right time to be cutting it back for drying because can you see that these petals here or the sepals have started to naturally decay and in fact it's skeletonized here do you see what i mean i've not left this a moment too soon so the brown leaf here is naturally starting to decay and this one here has actually skeletonized. Doesn't that look absolutely beautiful? So if you haven't already picked your hydrangeas for drying, I would recommend that you do it as soon as possible in order that you retain the best of this lovely autumn color and you don't just have a head of sort of parchment brown, which isn't quite so attractive. 
So what I'm going to do is to dry my hydrangeas but have it looking purposeful and attractive at the same time. So I've got myself this old vintage vegetable dish. I guess at some stage it must have had a lid over the top and I picked this up from a charity shop for a pound and if you love going to the charity shop I do have a playlist of all my charity shop adventures and then I've got a crunched up piece of chicken wire and just to hold that in place I'm going to use this piece of string to thread it through the top of the chicken wire round the handle and back again. At this stage, I'm thinking, I bet my secateurs aren't going to cut through this string. So we'll have to give it a go. And if not, I'll just tie a neat bow. Are you going to cut, Mr. Secateur? Well, perhaps not. And then put a little bit of water in the bottom. So to dry your hydrangeas, they do need a little bit of water. So the idea is they take up the water and normally if you're using fresh flowers, you would want to replenish the water as it was taken up. But with the hydrangeas, you just let them take up the water and then they will dry slowly over time. I suspect with the lateness in the season that my hydrangeas will be dry within the week. So I may as well enjoy them as something beautiful while they dry and then enjoy them a second time actually as dried flowers. So what I'm going to do here, as you can see, is taking off the leaves and then just placing them in the water. So I've chosen a shallow container because my stems aren't very long. If you have the mop head hydrangeas or a more mature bush than I've got, you could probably cut on longer stems, more generous stems which is why if I want to use these when they're dried, I'm going to have to either display them, continue to display them in a shallow bowl or to add a false stem to them so I can arrange them in a taller vase. Oh, these colours are lovely. I love the way that everything changes over time. pretty good doesn't it so practical but beautiful at the same time and this is one of the hydrangeas I cut as a test a few weeks ago so that's been sitting in a small amount of water on my kitchen windowsill and it is now dried out quite papery in texture and has retained some of that colour as you can see it's on a really short stem so if you do want to elongate the stem I'm taking here is a floristry wire and bend over the top of the wire to create like a little shepherd's crook. Just trying to get that in focus. Like that. Lie that against the stem and then taking the long wire and wrap it round a few times. And there you have a hydrangea, which is on a much longer stem. So a lovely little floristry technique for you there and let's get on and see what's been happening in the rest of the garden. So my hydrangeas, my hydrangeas, my dahlias are ready to cut again but what is concerning me is that the edge of the, hydra the dahlia patch is the grass is starting to creep into my bed so boring as it is I need to do a little bit of weeding. Well, not so much weeding as digging up these tufts of grass so they don't start to take the over in the bed. So I don't mind there being a sort of soft transition from flower bed to lawn. But I just don't want it creeping in too much. I want a free zone. I can tell exactly where my garden starts and the lawn finishes. It just makes it all a little bit tidier. And see, when you put your mind to it, 
it only takes a few moments. So with the buckets of water in hand, I'm going to start cutting my dahlias. So I'm going to go long. I'm quite pleased with the, day, the way these dahlias have really spread out. I'm practically cutting the whole plant. I will just take off the lower leaves and get it into water straight away. So when I put that in the vase, I probably will have to take out quite a bit of the leafage at the side so you can actually see the flowers so they won't be hidden but sometimes a little bit of natural foliage is great because it does help fill out the vase a little bit so I've got myself three full blooms there with some buds showing I'm going to leave those other buds on the top and they will develop a little bit over the coming weeks and then just checking down here at my feet at the sedum I've planted. I've given everything a water this morning as it was looking a tiny bit dry. My cyclamen seems to be doing quite well too. There we've got the scabious, the three scabious planted here. And then across here, the cyclamen, the cyclamen, the <laughs> sedum with a little bit of colour. And then the cyclamen underneath the tree and that's really started to fill out. I reckon some of those have doubled in size since I planted them out, was it last week or the week before? I can't quite remember. And then checking in at the back of the beds here, this is behind the hydrangea. So my Arum Italicum Pictum is doing well. I am quite curious about those seedlings which are growing up. I had assumed that they might have been forget-me-nots, but I'm not entirely sure. What do you think? And the question of the video is, what do I do with those seedlings? Do I leave them as they are? Do I dig them up and put them into pots to keep them safe over the winter months? And if I should be mulching my garden over the winter, do I cover up the seedlings or try and work my way around them? And there, look how lovely. The growth is there on the foxglove. And then you can see here, I have well and truly made a total mess of my hydrangea, but I guess it's got two chances. I've taken probably 50% of the heads. I left the more um, immature ones on the, on the stem, on the bush. And I'm just hoping that I haven't damaged that and it will live to bloom another day or at least make it through the winter in order that I can prune it properly to encourage growth next year. So I've still got some colour left with my planting out of the cosmos. I'm going to go really low here. Oh, deadhead one down there. The question is, if I cut all three stems, I'm going to have absolutely none left. So I'm going to go in here. I reckon these cosmos are probably not going to last much longer. And as I'm a flower farmer, I'm going to cut another stem or perhaps two of my Noreen. A rather stunning bright flower. Shall I go for two? I'm going to go for two. It just sort of frees up the space a little bit and I can see the new stems that are coming through. I feel a little bit like I've got my own harvest festival going on. So I've got my cut flowers in water ready for arranging in a vase indoors. And then I have got my hydrangeas looking pretty but all set for drying out so I can then use those in arrangements during the winter months. I'm thinking they'd look fabulous in some Christmas table centrepieces. Thank you so much for joining me in today's episode of my novice gardening exploits. And if you want to have more advice on flower arranging, where I am actually an expert, do check out my Facebook group, Flower Start World. And why not consider joining my membership group here on YouTube, where I run a hands-on flower club every month. And there's additional perks for you to enjoy in the club group too. And let me know in the comments whether you think by harvesting my flower heads of my hydrangea 
I have harmed it in terms of pruning it next year. There's such a lot of things. There's just so many things to take on board. I'm not quite sure my brain's up for it. That's all for me for now. And I'll see you again next time.